All right, we are back again to continue our lecture. And um, this afternoon we'll be talking about the basis for comparative counseling in counselor education program. The basis for comparative counseling in counselor education program. Comparative counseling in counselor education program is built upon several key bases that provide a foundation for training future counselors and guiding their practices. It is important that students on training, counseling students on training, get to have this important information about the diversities, cultural diversities, societal diversities that we are talking about, so that they equip themselves with all the materials they need, the therapies, the techniques, the theories that they need, and all the qualities to be able to work with people coming from different backgrounds. All right, so we'll take some of the reasons why this course is necessary for you, 100 level students on training. Okay, the first thing is to ensure a strong theoretical foundation. This course is coming at the beginning of your program, your 100 level second semester. And you can see it is so that you are able to expose yourself to different th counseling theories, to different therapeutic methods. Study them, learn them. If you learn them at this stage, you will be revising them as you go. So this course is brought your way in order to expose you to different theories, different therapies, so that you will have a very strong foundation in counseling. Secondly, is to emphasize evidence-based practice so that any time you choose a theory to use, you are not choosing a theory that people or researchers have used repeatedly and have seen that it is not working. No. You select based on those that researchers have research uh, statistics and evidence proving that they have been very effective through the years. Another reason why comparative counseling is important in our counselor education program for you is to inculcate a client-centered approach to whatever you are doing in counseling. So your focus in counseling is the client and the client comes to you for counseling. <coughs> The program is not first yours, but that of the client. And so, until the client's needs are met, the counselor should not feel satisfied. So, counselor education program stresses the importance of fostering a client-centered approach so that you are sure that the person that came to counseling with a problem is well attended to. All right, so until that client is satisfied and his problem is solved or resolved, you don't tell yourself that you have worked. You don't clap your I mean, clap for yourself as a counselor that you have done your best. Your best may not have gone anywhere in addressing the client's problem. So the client is our priority, the client is our focus. And so we do everything by exploring all options the therapeutic approaches that are available to ensure that we address clients' problem. Another reason is to ensure cultural competence. To ensure cultural competence here means that we should be able to have an understanding, like we've just discussed, of the differences that exist in our society. The fact that there are different cultures and people are coming from these different cultures. And so each time we are working with people from different cultures, we 
work in a way and manner that we are not stepping on their toes we are not working against them we are not insulting them we are not hurting them in any way we do we operate in a way and manner that everybody lives satisfied another reason for this course among our students is the purpose of flexibility and adaptability so that as they are exposed to different therapeutic measures they will feel free and be creative enough to shift from one theory to the other one therapy to the other okay one last reason i want to talk about in this lecture this afternoon but these are not all is the fact that we teach this course for the purpose of global literacy you don't stay here in Unsuk and tell yourself Department of Guidance and Counseling and tell yourself that uh, the entire world ends in Unsuk in the Department of Guidance and Counseling. Sorry. You need to know how counseling is done in other places. You need to know that there are differences. You need to know that people have different interests. You need to know that around the globe, these diversities exist and that while you are here today maybe in the next two years you will be in another continent not the continent of africa this knowledge of comparative counseling goes with you if you are a serious student and you keep this knowledge with you and you try to make sure that you update yourself by studying okay briefly i want us to shift to the next topic and the topic will be considering is Africa or African versus Western counseling practices. Africa is different from the Western world. We are different in many ways. Africa itself is vast and it has a lot of diversities. But we want we, we are not concerned about we want to look at Africa as a whole and then look at counseling practices in Africa and compare it with the ones in the Western world. We will look at just a few areas um, of diversity. So within Africa, we have diversities of cultural beliefs and practices. We also have it at the, at the Western uh, world, quite okay. but. When we talk about diversities of cultural beliefs and practices, it is more pronounced in Africa. Africa is characterized by rich diversities in cultures, in languages. You can imagine Nigeria alone has what I will call uncountable number of languages. In fact, those of us within Nigeria will even wonder when we hear the names of some tribes, we are wondering is that within Nigeria? Yes. So our diversities are so many, numerous. Counselors need to be sensitive to cultural beliefs, rituals, and uh, ritual practices, and everything around a group of people. While Africa is characterized with these differences, the Western uh, society is also has its own difference, but counseling there operates in a more standardized and professional framework so you have it is institutionalized compared to what we do in africa our diversities determine how counseling goes although we have it formally but this our diversities make create some differences in the way we do counseling compared to the way it is done outside this country. When it comes to community and family focus, community and family focus. In Africa, Africans operate more collectively and in a family interest way compared to what the Oyibo person will do. And so 
when you go when there is an issue to discuss when there is an issue you think it is a counseling issue that autonomy that an individual will come with and expect to be counseled in the African setting they will subject it to family issue they will hold family meetings and do things like that so issues are often seen in the context of the community and family and so counselors may work with family units in order to address individual issues this is true in the western society however an individual has autonomy to seek counseling all by himself without any reference to his community or his family. Then, another area of difference between the Africa and uh, Western counseling practices is the issue of spirituality and religion. No Africans are known as um, uh, are known to be very religious. Eh? So we we Africans seem to have our beliefs embedded in our religion we have culture like we can't separate our culture religion put together like that we have affiliation to our religions to whatever we believe spiritually and many people turn to religious leaders for counseling for help anytime they need assistance they need advice they are confused about anything they feel stranded they consult spiritual leaders the clergies in fact they go to the extent of consulting the traditional healers for guidance i'm not saying that counseling does not exist it does it does but majority of Africans will first of all go through their religious leaders. They will go through the traditional doctors or healers as may be put sometimes. And so while religion and spirituality are important for some persons in the West, they don't consider that. They are not they do integrate religion into the mainstream of counseling. They are not saying religion is bad, but they don't, they make sure that counseling operates on its own. Then religion and spirituality is their private life. They are able to clearly separate between those. It is difficult to do that within the African setting. Sometimes it is difficult because of our beliefs. So you have another factor is the stigma around mental health issues. How do Africans handle this stigma around mental health issues? In Africa, when someone is seen going to a counselor, the person is assumed that he has mental problems and or in fact they think that the person is running mad or is mad to have gone to seek counseling so because of that kind of notion people try to run away from being stigmatized like that many africans will rather keep their problems with them than seek help because they do not want anybody to see them visiting the counselor. This stigma can be a significant barrier to seeking professional counseling in Africa. It is only in Africa that people think so. For the Western, the Westerners, people in the Western world, they don't think this way. They feel free to discuss their issues. In fact, people seek counseling openly. They discuss their mental health issues easily. They disclose them on TV. They discuss, they tell the world about 
how they attempted suicide, how they were having suicidal ideation, how things were not working for them, how they got involved in drugs. They feel free, and as they do that, they heal. We are yet to get there as Africans, but I believe we are gradually get, getting there. With lots of awareness, people will learn to open up. All right, accessibility to services is another area in area of difference in practice. Accessibility to services. In Africa, we will talk about limited resources and infrastructure. So even if people have problems, I've already talked about stigma. And then access. When we are talking about access, yes, counselors may be there, but to have people go to them is a problem because of stigma. Now, in the other parts of the world, they have it all, they seem to have it all, and so accessing counseling is not a problem. In fact, because it is always there, but the question of is the counseling service affordable? Are they able to pay for it? That's the challenge they have. Because these services are paid services. They pay for them. And because they pay for them, sometimes it is difficult for some people to be able to pay to access counseling. So, but for its availability, yes, it's there. All right, so we have talked about counseling, cooperative counseling, just some parts that I think we are important for us to mention. I have said earlier that you can't talk about comparative counseling without mentioning the issue of um, diversities. And so bear in mind, diversity is very important. Difference is very important. The bottom line is for our training counselors to be able to work with people from everywhere without having problems. So comparative counseling is indeed an important field in counseling practice that broadens the understanding of practicing counselors as well as students counselors to be able to administer counseling, paying full regard to clients' uniqueness and differences. It is our duty to show regard for every form of diversity without prejudice. This literacy helps counselors to operate with global diversities in mind, ensuring that every issue is respectfully addressed. So it is to help you to be able to have regard for every society and every culture that you, uh, you get to work with or you get to interact with people, whoever they are, whether they are rich or they are poor, whoever they are that need your help, you should be able to respectfully address their issues, taking advantage of the knowledge, the, the strong foundation, the theoretical foundation that you already built in this course. So I leave you with the assignments to ensure that you do everything possible to see that you expose yourself to quite a number of counseling theories and uh, therapeutic approaches. Thank you very much. If there are questions, I will need you 